curious about this. It's quite unusual to have a presentation sitting in front of a desk, so uh, I try my best. So, my name is Christoph Zimmermann, and I'm from the Public Domain Project. Um, at the Public Domain Project, I'm, uh, I'm the server administrator at the moment, and I do a lot of technical support and solve technical questions in the background, you know, metadata questions, connection questions, file form questions, and all these kinds of geeky things in the background. Carlo Fleisch is also here in Hong Kong together with us at the Wikimedia CH booth. Um, he is our music historian, uh, working with all the old records. He's also by himself a record collector. Um, he's also doing all the copyright investigation stuff in the background and support with the radio stations we see later. You can always talk to him in Hong Kong too. Uh, yeah. uh, short overview over my presentation, some introduction, what the public domain is all about, and some short background for the copyright law for anyone who is not up to the level about it. Then parts of our project, then our own digitization process, short outlook and because time is short for the presentations here I ask you to come for questions and answers to the Wikimedia CH booth from the chapter village where we have a lot of time to speak about any of the questions you have and all the further ideas you might have for our project. So the basic goal of the public domain project is to collect, protect, and make and enable access to music records. Um, that's right on the line of Wikimedia and Wikimedia Foundation that we have to protect our cultural heritage. All the land projects are working in this field and also to when we protect stuff we also have to make it open and accessible and usable by people else. Nobody uh, cares about stored old records in the basement. Nobody knows that they are there. So, so enable access means digitization, bring them online, make them usable. So our project was independently uh, funded in Switzerland in 2009, so we are connected to the Wikimedia movement, but we are a own running project. Um, 2009 we went online, 2010 we, went, we won a prize in the competition held by Wikimedia Germany. Uh, this gave us the opportunity to buy a laser turntable, you we'll see this one later. 2011, uh, collector, another Swiss collector joined our project and bringing in 30,000 additional records to our collection. And uh, last autumn, uh, the Swiss Foundation Public Domain was officially registered as a charity foundation in Switzerland, so we also have now the legal background our project running. Some facts. We already have about 50,000 records we store in our archive. Uh, from these 50,000 records there are more or less 700 digitized files already available online. We've rented a small archive room. It's not properly climatized one we have now, it's, so it's a short term solution, about 50 square meters big. Uh, we are a small project, we are only six people running this project at the moment, and anything is paid 
by ourselves at the moment. We are really happy that we got support by Wikimedia CH, paying us the flights to be here on Wikimania, so thanks to Wikimedia CH for that. Yeah, we are talking about records and 50,000 records. You see a small view on our collection when we move to the collection of the second um, collector who joined in. We, we see here uh, the storage boxes. There are about 50 of them. We have moved. That's a big collection, but we have the second one. It's, yeah. So you talk about not we are not talking only talking about digital and computer problems, you are also talking about logistical problems and heavy lifting problems, moving stuff around. So we digitize music. We digitize music that is out of copyright. There's no copyright on it, so it's to use. So that means we provide for you as a user, as a musician, as a creative uh, person, we provide, provide music that you can freely use for anything you would like to do with music. So uh, you can do, for example, on the radio, online radio stream with it, you can use it for podcasts, you can use it for background music, for example. Here at Wikimay, uh, Mania, I, I already met the Brazilian girl who is using our music to replace the background music inside videos from NASA. NASA is using uh, licensed music, so she is not able to upload the original NASA video files to Wikimedia Commons. So, so she replaces the background music in these videos by music that she gets from our project media comments to make a new video out of it that is compatible with the licensing scheme in comments. It's one way how we enhance the whole wiki media movement. And yeah, it's free music, so you don't have to ask anybody. Just use it. And this brings me next chapter, a uh, short introduction about uh, copyright law when it comes to copyright law versus public domain. Um, in every country, the copyright law itself is a time-limited protection for the creative works. So after this protected time, the copyright law the copyright protection expires. After copyright expires, a work falls into the public domain. That's a closed legal term in the English-speaking world. Uh, when you are German, spe uh, when you are a German speaker, there is the same term with the same meaning. Uh, is called Gemeinfreiheit. In French, it's uh, domain public. In the other languages, I don't know the exact legal term. I hope there are good articles in Wikipedia with the correct intermediate links in the other languages. Um, so it's uh, important to know that copyright protection and public domain is really the opposite of each other. So when you are talking about copyright law and time limited protection, we are asking now how long is something protected. Uh, in Wikipedia there is a really nice colorful map uh, you can find where a researcher Followed all the countries in different colors where the color represents a copyright protecting time. So every uh, country with the same color has the same length of protection. And you see it's colorful, that means it's complicated. 
that's all what you should get from this picture. So our project foundation and the servers are located in Switzerland, so we have to obey the Swiss copyright law. In Switzerland, it's currently the protection time 70 years after the death of the author. There could be more than one author in the world. And, and 50 years after the first release of a certain work, public release. Another possibility for a project to accept uh, music files would be that the, that the author, the creator itself, decides to release his own work to the public. So, for example, applying a CC BY, Creative Commons BY license, or applying the Creative Commons uh, public domain uh, CC0 license. CC0 license is made exactly for that, that the creator is able to say my work is licensed like it would be in the public domain. That's why it also has this uh, separate graphics. Coming back to our project, uh, our project is divided in several parts. Um, as you see, it looks like Wikipedia. Um, I'm not a web developer, but from that uh, background, that it looks the same. <laughs> um, we have different parts, the file archive in the central, then we have a music encyclopedia, then we have own radio streams where we use our own uh, copyright free music to make online streams out of them and then as I said the legal background is the Swiss Foundation Public Domain. Um, yeah, a short spin up. Uh, we run the own music encyclopedia on purpose. Where it is possible we use Wikipedia articles and Wikipedia content, but we have um, a different view what's relevant. What's relevant, for example, when we have a record, an old historic record in our hand, it's relevant. So we need a space where we can add all this information, all this data without discussing is it relevant or not. And as I said, we are really happy to share all our things and use the content that is already here. <clears throat> and also we uh, try to keep track of more information that would be possible to, to add to a Wikipedia article. So for example, which label was it run, uh, who wrote the lyrics, all these kind of things that are needed to, to, uh, to write down about the certain record. We see this in a few minutes. Then we have uh, our own foundation as the legal background. We uh, try to get our own money to run our project more or less independently. And also to credit protect our private uh, private person from getting sued uh, and to have a legal base in Switzerland to make it clear that we have to obey the Swiss law and nothing else. So I'm talking about digitization and digitization and the digitization project so it's absolutely clear that I'm talking about quality can't digitize all stuff in the somehow way doing it today this way and tomorrow I change something and yeah. So our project is focused on working like a museum or professional archive would do it. We're not on the point yet, but that's the great goal. That's why we are searching connections for all the, the glam um, people coming from the archive and 
consume sites and press Wikipedia on open access. And that's also why we have uh, partnerships with, for example, the project Gutenberg, a uh, 40 year old project digitizing public domain books. Uh, another project would be Wikisource, they also digitize books. And also should be well known inside the Wikipedia community the IMSLP, the International Music Store Library Project. They digitize um, free scores. So they start with scanning, then they retype all the scores so they are uh, computer readable, um, reusable, nice scores. Um, you should be able to link to the IMSLP with a simple InterWiki link, scores, double point, and they are there. So our digitizing process uh, <coughs> starts with uh, dry and wet cleaning. We are uh, talking about 60, 70, 100 year old records. You can imagine a lot of them are stored in bad condition, so they are not clean. You have a lot of noise and other uh, things on it when you digitize them without cleaning. Uh, then we uh, digitize them with our studio equipment. We use flag files. I have more pictures about that. Yeah, cleaning. Bad example of a only 50 year old record, stored very badly. Uh, the other example, it's about 70 year old, but it was stored in a good condition. So just dry cleaning is enough to make a good digitization out of it. The digitization process itself, we are only using professional studio equipment. We recall in insanely high 24 bit and 192 kilohertz. We are talking about mono records. We need this high quality to make it possible to produce good restorations out of these records we digitize. We, as the core team, we are focused on digitizing. The stuff you need specialized is expensive equipment on it. Restoration and all the other things around, that's something you can do with a normal computer, so it's one thing that is possible to crowdsource. And we are using a free, open, lossless uh, audio format, the uh, plug format, that is now also very well known in the studio, uh, music studios. And we are using a professional uh, laser turntable. There's only one company in the world who is able to produce a contactless, needleless laser turntable. Uh, costs new around 15,000 US dollars in the universal version we have. That's the device we won in the contest uh, at Wikimedia Germany. Uh, Wikimedia Germany was very helpful to, to support our project, to bring our project to the next steps and to give us this device to, to bring up um, our digitization process and to, to give us the opportunity to provide the, quali the quality we would like to achieve. Then the next step in the digitization process is copyright investigation. This process is the most time consuming process of all. Um, that's because of lacking information. Uh, we own two paper encyclopedias focused on musicians and record labels and stuff like that, both size of 10 to 50 books. Sometimes they are not enough to get all the information we need to see if a work is in the public domain or not. And there we need more help, we need more books. Yeah, and Yeah. 
end result of the copyright investigation and when we upload some stuff to our wiki, it looks like that. On top we add an info box that looks exactly like the metadata information box in Wikimedia Commons. Uh, we use this box to copy all our stuff to Wikimedia Commons. And then we add our own info box with all the additional information we need to record. So we scan also the, <coughs> the label in the middle of a record. Nice picture. And which label it was, uh, numbers that are printed on the record, release date, um, who was the author, who wrote the lyrics was an independent person, uh, conductors, uh, what type of music it is, then the download links, and then the end result at the bottom you see which countries and which areas is this work in the public domain. So in this example you see it's the public domain since 2011, Europe and Switzerland longer in the public domain in the US, but for example in Mexico it's still copyright protected. Then we upload all our stuff to our own servers that are located in Switzerland. For us it's a bit of a problem that uh, Wikimedia Commons server is in the US. We are allowed to upload stuff that's free in Europe, but not in the US. They close one eye and overlook that. Um, for all the digitization projects inside Wikipedia, it would be helpful to have uh, common servers in different areas where you have, have to apply different laws. Um, and as I said, all our stuff that is free in the European Union, we also upload to Wikimedia Commons and is usable for any use inside Wikipedia and Wiki uh, media related projects. And as I said, we protect the record, so we try to uh, do good storing with it. We uh, one of the project members developed uh, our own project story boxes out of uh, sustainable wood. So it fits exactly the records, you can fit 100 records in it, so it's faster to, uh, to search through your boxes. And we are currently running a crowdfunding project to buy 100 of these boxes to start with them. Yeah. Let me give some short outlook what we, we plan or what I try to achieve and what people I'm looking for to get in contact. Uh, I met some Italian guy who is willing to help us to bring, bring our metadata inside Wikidata. As you can imagine, it's highly structured data. It would be, in my opinion, really helpful inside Wikidata. Of course, we need funding. Uh, we have to pay rent, we would like to have a public office with all our digitization equipment. Without a public office it's not possible that interested volunteers are able to help us in the digitization process. At the moment it's located in the basement of one of our project members. And yeah, that's not the way how you can involve volunteers. Um, I would really like to synchronize the metadata with the text inside the files we provide online. We also have an anonymous FTP. So I need to have synchronization between data and database and the data and tag. So also when you do backups or rerolls from the files, you still have all the metadata together. In the long term, we are at the moment uh, five people from Switzerland and one from Germany. 
we are really welcome to have volunteers and interested people from all over the world. The music is all over the world located and it has the same problems. It's getting old and it's getting lost when we don't do anything about it. Yeah, so as I said, we are looking for more or less anything. Uh, translators, developers, software developers, uh, Wikidata enthusiasts. Um, also, we need administrators inside the uh, media wiki. We have spam problems, we have all the other maintenance stuff. I have no experience with it. We also need uh, backend administrators, uh, server developers. And of course, we also need uh, sponsors to give us money and we collect records. When you have old records or you know someone or have a grandfather or grandmother who was collecting records, it would be really helpful if you can keep them, get them and get in contact with us so we can uh, collect and protect them. I would like to thank the, our partners uh, in Switzerland and all around and our few sponsors. And if you like to contact us, uh, you can reach me by email address Lisso at PD Project or my colleague uh, Carlo Beach at PD Project. Thank you.